Hello and welcome back everyone to the next episode on Anubhav training series. In the last session, we talked about how to implement a Fury app to insert data using Fury application post request to Capum and Capum will eventually insert the data to our Mongo database. This complete end to end full stack training is going to make you expert on Capum, including development on MongoDB. For detailed training on Capum, please subscribe our training on anubavtrainings.com. So in today's episode, we will see how to validate, update and delete the data using Capum. So let's come back to our use case. Uh, in the last session, I showed creating a new record and we try to create a record with the same customer name and con company name perhaps and that record was duplicated. So if I save, you can see it is saving. And there is now a duplicate record with the same customer name Robert. So I don't want that to happen. I want system to throw me a validation error whenever I try to insert a record with the same customer name or same name of the contact person. So let's go ahead and implement the same. So ideally, what is the best way or what is the right place where should you implement the validation? So Many people think that we our validation should be kept on the UI side. That's a more of a design question. So you can see here we are using Capum as the middleware and we have the Mongo database on the back end and UI on the front end. So perhaps immediate attention comes in mind that perhaps we should put validation on front end side. But think about it. Today you are using uh, you're using a Fury UI. But tomorrow, what about your company decides to go to Android or iOS or maybe React JS, yes, or Angular JS, yes. So, whatever validations you code on UI, you have to again write the same code in all the technologies. So your effort of replicating the code in other technology increase, which increase your maintenance. The second biggest reason is security. You add a validation on front end. It but if somebody is smart enough, they can check the network call. They can check your request, which is going to Capum, and they can imitate the same post request, put request via a tool called Postman. And then maliciously, they can pass incorrect data to your Capum, and Capum will then create this data in the in the database. So they will bypass the UI validations, and they will use Postman to post malicious data through your through your framework to the database. So this kind of attacks are also very often people does that. So we need to be little careful and try to put critical validation always on the on the back end side, always on the framework side. So this is the, the reason and the right way of doing it. So at Anubo trainings, we focus on value learning. We are not just going to teach you concept, but also the right practices and best practices to do these things. Our detailed training on BTP and Capum uh, is going to help you unearthing these kind of secrets and the right practices when it comes to developing applications. So now let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go back to my PPT and you can see step number one is to add a validation count. So first I wanted to show you what am I doing. I will take this query from my code and go to my system and then I will just try to do a count. So you can see we are counting for a name with the same name and we are using a regular expression. So why regular expression? Because in database, the data can be case sensitive. The Robert R can be capital, complete Robert can be capital, complete name can be capital or it could be small letter. So we have to put a regular expression which is going to check uh, case insensitivity uh, the data. Yeah, so I'm going to go back and put here, let's say a name called Robert in small letter and system is still going to find the record count as one which means if there is already a record with this this name, we don't permit and we throw an exception. So let's go ahead and do that. So I am going to grab this code and switch over back and we now go back to our our app and in the SRV layer, in the service layer, we have the create method where we are doing the creation. And in here, before we really start inserting a record, we are just going to inject our validation. So that's the beauty. That's the advantage what we are trying to achieve here with the help of this. So there are some special characters. 
these are just due to copy paste from ppt so just get rid of them okay so that's our logic now and this is more uh, more meaningful logic where we are checking if there is a name and the name is matching with the incoming customer name and if the record count is more than one just throw an error and on the front end side i have already handled it in my last episode using uh, the controller where we are doing a error handling and if something goes wrong just throw this error message uh, to the user so this is something which we already did it on the front end now just to be double sure and double check you know any kind of update errors or any kind of create errors should be notified to the user so let's give a try now one more time i will come back and refresh our page and now i will try to add another company for example a shell and i will add again robert so last time you saw when i was inserting data for robert uh, system was taking it and it was not it was allowing me to create duplicates and this time when i save you can see it gives me an error that customer already exists so that's a great way of implementing the uh, the validation when it comes to working and building an application do it on your on your backend framework okay so next step is to load an existing customer so if i kind of do an fo help i want to enable fo help on on the name if i choose fo on a name or a company name or a contact name and then i choose that then it should load all the data of existing customer there so to do that we will implement a format uh, a fragment which gives me a value help this is all covered in my advance or in my fury training I'm not going deeper inside Fury, but I'm just going to show the flow. You will easily understand if you know UI5 and Fury. So first of all, what we have here is we are going to create a pop-up fragment and then we are going to load that pop-up fragment over here. So I will just go back to the steps again and you can see here we want to load existing customers. So we have a couple of lines of code which we're going to add. So let's grab this code and go to our add controller and we just first add this code so here what are we doing we are just going to also use this so this is the first part where i am just implementing confirm pop-up and the next part here is also copy the code for rest of the part i will explain that in a minute a short so let's paste that code and we also get rid of this special character which is coming let's format our document okay so let's understand what are we doing here so on this occasion we are just implementing a new fragment so we will implement a f4 help so let's implement f4 help in the add view for our customer name field and i will say uh, value help support so we will say show value help and we will add value help request function so let's add that so we have show value help which brings f4 help and we have on supplier f4 which is a event handler which we have implemented here and whenever F4 is pressed, we are going to check a global object for a pop-up fragment. If it is not there, we are going to create it. So we are going to create this pop-up fragment. And the next step is we are going to launch this fragment with binding to customer entity set. So it will show all the list of customers with the ID and name. And now what user does, user choose one customer, then that value will we will read here. And then for that single customer which user selected i'm going to lead all the data and this data i'm going to set to my local json model and we will change the mode of editing to update and if user click on update button then here is the mode update code where we are updating the same customer firing a put request from our fury app so this is a complete flow of loading existing customer and allowing user to edit and then finally saving uh, the edited customer back to the sap system but one last thing which i'm missing is my uh, my code for uh, for the pop-up fragment so let me also grab that on my system so i will go back to the slides 
this entire source code is available to all of you on github repository so we are sharing a github repository where this is available please subscribe our channel today and drop us an email on contact at anubhavtrainings.com to just subscribe this, uh, this or get the source code of this entire application and then you can start adapting according to your needs the changes yes so that is what you can easily do so now you can see here i have got my fragment in this we are just using select dialog control and on confirm pop-up we are just going to set the value of the customer record back onto the screen so let's go and test this now i will switch over back and now my app is started so if i see here for contact name i got a fo help i click the fo help there's a problem let's press f12 and check so it's time to investigate somewhere so this customer pop-up is unable to open ah we didn't even declare this customer pop-up global variable let me also do that so we will declare this customer pop-up global variable yeah okay let's give it a try now so it starts the app again and now i press f4 and voila i can see all the customers yes so let me load max and i click you can see max from samsung has been loaded i will change the country for max to uk and i will click on update you can see the update is successful so if you can go back and check for max you would see the value will be uk so i can also clear my screen and then i can again select f4 and choose max you can see the country is changed to uk so this is the update part and the last part here is the delete part so an already customer is is being loaded and now we can delete so let's implement the delete logic from our ppt so here is just one function for deletion with a confirmation pop-up we will confirm from user if user really want to delete or not so that's something which i wanted to do so let's save okay some is more special characters are there from ppt yeah and let's format okay cool so what are we doing on delete so on delete button we are just confirming from user do you really want to uh, delete the data if user say yes and then on case of okay we are just taking the id of the selected product and we are firing a delete request to backend and then we say customer successfully deleted so let's try this out now i will create a new customer so first i will create a new customer with the name called let's say raj and uh, let me just choose here raj and i will say customer belongs to india and i can just click on create so the customer already exists okay so i will choose maybe himanshu and i click on create yes it's there now it's created so let's check in mongo if the customer himanshu has been created so we should see yes there is one record now for himanshu and if i go back and fire delete request or you can also press f4 and check himanshu here you see i can select load it and if i delete it asks me confirmation do you want to really do this i say okay and we should see yes the customer has been deleted from the database so if you go back to mongo and just check here now the record count becomes zero so that's how we can create edit and delete customer including validation where we are validating a customer which is already there with the same name we are not allowing system to to create that so this is a complete end-to-end -end flow of working with create update delete operations including get single I hope you enjoying this series of videos for complete source code please feel free to drop us an email on contact at anubhavtrainings.com and we will be happy to provide you the private git repository link through which you can access the source code of this application for more interesting videos like this please like share subscribe the channel and we'll see you in the next video